In this topic, we'll show you how to create various custom tables, which are really only applicable to the DM, but theoretically could apply to uh, a player as well. Um, for example, uh, Wild Magic, if it was still a thing. I'm not sure if it is with 5th edition yet or not. Um, but theoretically, a player could create their own table of custom side effects so that whenever they cast that particular spell that triggered a wild effect, it would automatically potentially roll against that particular table and choose one of the effects that that particular player had created. An example that I'm going to show you is how to create a custom weather table. For those of you who watched the campaign series of tutorials, um, you probably saw that I had gone through and linked in the weather uh, tables into the lower slot and I had to trigger uh, a roll off of each table. So if I drag these three tables here, for example, oops, didn't really want to open it, but yeah. Now I do want to open them. Um, typically, you would go through and you would do this. Because if you notice, there is no actual uh, all-in-one weather table, if you will, that would go through and, and, and roll all of the effects. But we can change that. And we can do so by creating our own particular table. And you do that by either right-clicking on the, the window here, and it will pop up this little dial... Uh, dial menu. Down here is the create item option. The other option is to click this here and click on an add item. Um, and you can do it by size or you can just click on add item. I just generally find it's easier to deal with it this way and then adjust the size of the table uh, as you see fit. So just drag that down out of the way. Now there are two ways that you can actually go through and create this uh, this table. Starting the actual entries within the table is going to be fairly similar, but when it's actually adding the content to the uh, the actual table, that's when you're going to look at potentially utilizing two different ways. Um, so for instance here, we see here that we have two rows. I'm not going to need two rows. And the reason for that is I'm trying to trigger a series of roles rather than trigger a role on a specific set of values. Uh, so if you look at the examples above here, there's a range that represents the results, so anywhere between 1 and a 14, it's going to be normal for the season. But if I happen to roll a 15 to a 17, then what is actually going to happen here is this effect is going to get triggered. Or if I roll between an 18 and a 20, this effect is going to get triggered. So that's not what we're looking for in this particular table. We need one row of tables. And I can show you an example of that. If you look for the treasure hordes, um, there are a number of them here. There is a coin challenge, and that literally just triggers off coin rolls, whereas this one triggers off uh, treasure, ta treasure table rolls. And this one has multiple rows, whereas this only has one. I mean, you're only rolling for a coin. You're not rolling for any additional item, but you are rolling for different kinds of coins. So if you think about it, you've got a category, and then within that category, you can trigger multiple roles. It's, it's a good way to look at it, kind of like object-oriented design to a certain degree. Um, whereas this one here, you can have multiple categories that you're going to be rolling off of, and then within those categories, you have multiple like-minded uh, or like-valued items that you then roll off of. Um, and you'll notice that this little square bracket here is a shortcut for telling Fantasy Grounds to utilize a table that already exists. And that's really what we're going to replicate here. But as I said, there are two ways that you can actually do that. So for our table here, I'm actually going to get rid of the second row. And I do that by clicking this edit list. And I deleted it by clicking on the second item here. And you have to click it twice. Once it'll turn it to horizontal and the second time we'll delete it. But at the same time, I need two more columns. So I'm going to click this option twice to create a total of three columns. I want one column for each table. Now I am done editing the actual list so I can get rid of that just for safety sake. In this case I want one roll. It's always going to be a one which means it's always going to trigger if I'm triggering a roll off of this particular table. To make things readable I'm going to create a uh, category header here. Uh, if I could learn how to spell and talk at the same time. Um, I'm 
precipitation, and the last column is wind. So we're going to have a temperature roll first, a precipitation roll next, and then a wind roll. Now, this is where the difference of the rolls comes into play. Much like everything else in, in Fantasy Grounds, you can actually go through and just simply drag and drop these categories in here. I'm not sure if this is how it's supposed to work, but it does in fact work. So if I actually go through and do a roll, you'll see that it's going to trigger three total rolls. So I've got um, 20 degrees Fahrenheit colder than normal, no precipitation, no wind. So it just seems to be a cooler day. But you'll see that it triggered the roll off of that one die that I did. So I no longer have to load each of these three tables individually. This will actually go through and do that for me. But as I said, there is a second way. Now the second way, as you've probably surmised, is to actually go through and use the bracket notation. So I'm going to delete this row. I'm going to add a row. And this little green button here adds a new row into place. And then I'm just going to get rid of that. All right, so I'm going to manually type in the name of the table in question. And it has to match exactly, otherwise it won't, fill, it won't find the table. So for that one there, and I'm going to use this because everything else in Fantasy Ground seems to use this particular notation. Um, notation. And I like keeping things consistent. Okay, so again, if I roll, provided everything is linked correctly, I should now see additional rolls triggered. Now what that does is that gives you the option to later manually modify or create your own set of weather tables. So maybe you want to add a few more seasons to this particular set of tables. Um, for example, a wider range of of uh, temperatures, um, a much wider range of, of precipitation, or no wind, light wind, strong wind. Well, maybe you want tornado, hurricane, a couple of other serious storms. So you can combine these tables into a much larger spectrum of the available weather options that you could create, but still trigger all of those rolls off of this one table. So I'm just going to call this, oops, I like capitalizing. Well, now all I have to do is create a reference to this one uh, one link. Um, rolls to there. Once you're done, all you have to do is lock. Now you can't make any additional changes to this. You can, however, trigger the output. Where does the output go? Well, you can set it out as a story item, which means it will create a story entry. You can set it out as a parcel, which wouldn't really be applicable because you're not going to be getting any loot out of this unless for some reason a tornado carried a cow in it. Encumbrance or encounter, sorry, not encumbrance. I'm so used to seeing ENC as encumbrance. <laughs> again, second edition days. Um, but an encounter, again, this here really isn't an encounter. You're just setting the day's atmosphere. And the most appropriate place for this is going to be chat. Now, you'll note that in all of these roles, there is the um, I effect here, the I with the slasher. That means that the players are not seeing this role. So you are not cluttering their screens with your own weather roles. Um... Which means that in theory, if you got a role that really didn't make a whole lot of sense, you could potentially go through and um, re-roll it and g create a role with uh, with a little bit more uh, that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, a good example of that: uh, heavy rain or heavy snowfall with a light wind. Okay, maybe that could be applicable, but normal for the season. Well, if it's dead summer, is that normal? Those kinds of things. Those situations. All right. So now all I have to do is I tie that to there. And in case you didn't know, this toggles. And then I create my role, and I do not need these three tables open any further. So it's an easy way to go through and simplify the process of creating um, a more efficient 
method for you to go through and, and succeed in, in completing your campaign. An extreme example could be that you have a set of seasonal tables. Those seasonal tables, you could use as long as, and that would really only apply if you're, you're tracking the calendar. Um, but those seasonal tables could trigger seasonal appropriate storms. And then on the extreme end, maybe throw in, like for example, the summer and spring, Maybe there's a late spring sun, a winter storm that's come through because he rolled a, a, a hundred out of a hundred, for example. Um, or in the middle of winter, there is a tornado because southerly winds came up um, and, and triggered a, a, a strong tornado or a hurricane-like storm along the coast, that kind of thing. Uh, so so you, you can see very easily how deep you can make this if you really wanted to when it comes to the level of detail you want to be able to throw your players into, the level of immersion you want to be able to throw your players into. There really is no limit. I don't know if there's a recursive limit as to how many tables down you can go. Um, that might be something I can check with Fantasy Grounds with, or Smiteworks rather. But generally, the, the, the limitation here is how much do you want to throw at them for detail? 